Happy Friday, everybody. It's your boy, Coach Lee. Friday, you know what we do on Fridays. We bring you those first take type of um, interviews. We have fun. We're going to bring it to you real and raw. Give you all a little bit of break for all the madness that's going on right now. So let's roll in in this bad boy. But, you know, before I can do that, where you at? There you wow. are. Wow. Hey, you up, man? Hey, look, it's your dude with Uncle Leroy. Don't say the Leroy without the junior. You talk about giving to a raw like that. I'm thinking that's the No Limit Soul to make him say, oh, <laughs> oh, nah, 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 nah. But like you said, man, we got a fire interview. We got Cleveland yes, Brown, linebacker Montreal, Mac Meander, and he's also Graham fam. Like, I'm telling you, it took me a while to, I was like, Graham is on, backstage, backstage. Cleveland's own backstage, backstage. So it ended up with <laughs> Cleveland. But man, it's my dude. We about to, uh, no. exactly. Grambling in the house. So we definitely, you know, we're going to see how Grambling breathes it. I said all the time, you know what I'm saying? Without further ado, we're gonna bring him back. We're gonna bring him in here. Let's clap it up. What's, what's up, up man? What's up? What's good with you, man? I appreciate you fellas for having me today. I appreciate um, you. For real. Thanks for coming on with us. How's it going? How's it going, Well, I can't complain. Blessed. Glory. Look, you're so cool. Like, yeah, you know, it's all good. It's all good. So where you all uh, hanging out with us out from? You know where you calling in from? Uh I'm in Cleveland right now. You know, we got a little bye week. So um, we had to stay here due to the COVID protocols and stuff. So I'm just chilling, waiting on a couple of teammates to come come by. We're going to just kick it. Ah, okay. Okay. You know, so we're going to get things started. But, uh, you know, you out there in Cleveland on the COVID protocols. Do you feel, you know, how how is that? What is that like? Uh, <clears throat> it's pretty cool, man. They got – they. It's it's some very strict rules. We all know it's for the safety of the players to, keep you know, keep the uh, season going within us. Uh, we got things. Um, we got these things called little connects on. They like little tracking devices. They get the beeping if you within six feet within uh, somebody. Uh, you have to come into the facility uh, wearing your mask, walk through wearing your mask. Uh, after practice, we got virtual meetings to, you know, what I'm saying uh, limit limit our time together. The joint group together and things. Uh, 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 practice don't be you know practice be about. Hour forty five minutes, you know what I'm saying? It'd be quick, get everything in out the way, and then they send us on the way home, you know. Uh make sure everything is always wiped down after you use after it's used, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean it's pretty it's pretty safe, I would say. Wow. Wow. That was impressive because going into the season, you know, I seen those uh, you know, for contract contact tracing those uh devices you were talking about. And I was like, Man, it, it looks like an uh Apple I watch. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. So, you know, is it comfortable? Like, do you wear it? Like, do you look at this? Like, hey, what's the time? You you know, you look at this. Like, how does, you know, is it comfortable? Um, I, I mean, I, I wear mine on my little lanyard. You know what I'm saying? So I'll come in and I just slip it in my little, uh, my lanyard and I just keep it on me. You know what I'm saying? Just stay out the way, put it under my shirt, pads or whatever. And go on about the day. Some people, you know, they wear it like a, like a little, uh, how, uh, house of Red oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it then on they still. <laughs> Some people wear it with a watch. But, you know, just two inches old, right? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Man, that's funny. Like, hey, I, I appreciate that insight, but uh, definitely, you know, want to get back, uh, 
you know, you from Grammy, like you grand fam, man. Like I'm telling you, like, man, I'm t- like that just had me all hyped up. And, uh, you know, what gets me hyped is, you know, I'm in a band. A lot of people might know it. I'm a uh, world fame band member. So what was your, you know, you've been on the football field. What was your favorite song? You know, what was your favorite band song? It was the hype song. I wish I had a name for you, but all I can do is is tell you how I go. But uh, it, was, it was like, bum, bum, ba, da, bum, ba, da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you, 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 uh, you, you want nowhere that you can, you can look on the field, you can look up in the stands, everybody on their feet, they're rocking, you know what I'm saying? And, Everybody hype, you know. It's about to some some amazing is about to happen after hearing that song. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to you, the hype song. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is the neck talking out the side of your neck. Like man, I'm telling. They used to get us all riled up in the band. So uh, we got Grand Fam in the building. Shout out Grand Fam represent. Told you, man. It's like, hey, it took me like ten times to make this band because I wanted to put Gremlin. I had Gremlin's on, like Gremlin pay or uh, made. But, uh, man, shout out to you. So what was your grammar experience like? Man, it's very, very, uh, first off, HBC was very, way, very different than from uh, PWI. Um, but what I learned about being at Gremlin, it's a lot of black entrepreneurs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I never met so many creative minds all in one sitting. Like, you're going to have your, you're going to, you gonna, you know, you're going to have your fun at HBCU. It was never a dull moment. Always fun, you know. I never woke up and was like, "Man, I'm tired of being here." You know what I'm saying? I always enjoyed it, um, but it was it was pretty much for me. It was, it's a big family, big organization. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just that 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 black community, like it was always fun. You had a lot of people with big and aspirational ideas. You know that you can learn from and pick off of their mind and gain more knowledge and stuff like that. Always had help. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't nobody trying to piggyback off the next person to climb that ladder and, you know, tip it over so can't nobody else, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was trying to elevate to the top. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Graham, yeah. Hey. Graham is hey. on, for real. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> hey, before we, uh, you know, shout out to our viewers. So, uh, you know, we got some viewers, you know, we're, we're live uh, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, we're live everywhere, man. Check us out, forcetalkerfriends.com. But uh, Facebook user says, uh, X, Ask him what he thinks of Deion Sanders committing to Jackson State. Hey, Facebook user, this is a Grambling State University show only. But, you know, because I'm a fan of Deion. Hey, I love this question, man. I, but what I, do you think? I, um, For one, shout out to his son. You know what I'm saying? I, I love the fact that, you know, the two basketball dudes and uh, his son also, like, they're trying to change the game and start a new trend. You know, like the top yep. elite at, uh, prospects coming out of high school, you know, uh, uh, going straight to HBCU, you know what I'm saying? It was made for us. Why not, you know, why not use it? Like, they're worried about sure. your school has the hype. Behind your name is the hype. Bring that hype with you, you know what I'm saying? Like, help our people, you know what I'm saying? I, I love what they're doing. And as far as Dion, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do with, with, with Jackson, you know what I'm saying? I hope he's all right with losing the Gremlin every time that they got him scheduled. That's what I'm talking about. I think he's going to do his thing with them boys, man. True, true, true. So, uh, you know, you coming from a PW, uh, you know, coming from a predominantly white school, coming to uh, um, HBCU, you know, what what was, you know, what hit you at ground? What made you become a G-man? You know, like that moment where, you know what I'm saying, you was on the field, maybe, you know, net was playing, you know, the team rocking, you know, it was like, man, you know what? I'm really with these dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a G-man, just like you said. What was, you know, when did you get that moment? Um, I had honestly ran into some trouble in my previous school, uh, University of Texas, you know what I'm saying? And Gremlin was like, you know what I'm saying? Like my, my, my second opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Coach Fobbs, shout out to Coach Fobbs. Uh, throughout that whole experience, you know what I'm saying? Uh, besides my family, um, uh, he called, I talked to Coach Fobbs. My incident happened in 2014 of June. I, I began talking to Coach Fobbs and I can, uh, July of 2014. I didn't get to Gremlin until January 7th of 2016. So for two years, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much like he he, he kept in contact, him, Coach Dooley and the staff, they kept in contact, you know, telling me what, what my situation I was going through. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? We can tell what kind of catch you are. We don't see it in your character. You're going you're gonna to elevate through this, you know what I'm saying? Just, just believe in yourself and, you know, 
You know, uh, so it was like he be, he became family before, I, like you know, what I'm saying, like I, I had I had family and friends that I knew for so long that turned their back on me or felt like it was the end of time for me. You know what I'm saying? And it was like he just they the grand found staff. They just you know what I'm saying, just took me in, took me under their wing, not knowing what was going on. Just like we hit you, we we with you every step of the way. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I had some other schools that was contacting me, but they was like not consistent. Or like they didn't feel like family like Coach Five them you know, was and, and stuff. So I was like, man, he this dude done been with he been with me every step of the way. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I don't, I feel like I owe it to him. You know what I'm saying? I feel like like he's giving me an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But he showed me like, you know what I'm saying? He, for one, he showed me he's a man of God. You know what I'm saying? This is a man that I'm gonna learn great things from and how to become a man as I elevate in life. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I took that route there, man. I got there in 2016, like I said. From the time I got on campus to the time I left, man, it was never a dull moment. You know what I'm saying? I loved it. I loved the brotherhood that I had created with my uh, teammate. I'm going to love him forever. We still talk every day. You know what I'm saying? Um, shoot, man. It was always – it was it was, it was was fun. Like, they made the game way much fun for me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was never – it was just – it was always a learning experience. Like, wherever it was fun at, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was also learning. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of smart guys on the team. It was, you know, a lot of guys that felt like they should be in higher places and felt like, hey, we we getting it out the mud, so we got something to prove. Like they was playing with a chip on their shoulder, you know what I'm saying? And you know, the mentality that them guys had, man, it was just, man, it was it was monstrous. But it was like something like I feel like, man, I need this, you know what I'm saying? Like I I, I feel like I was taking life for granted. Like, yeah, give give me right, you know what I'm saying? And so. Like I said, man, Grand Fam is always home. They always gonna have a spot in my heart for them, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I go back whenever I can. Uh, I'm, I can't wait. For, I'm glad this season is happening in the spring, so I can go catch the games while I'm in off season and stuff. But, yeah. Wow, and, you know, and that's a good point because you know, me being an alumni, a bam, and I got to keep putting it out there. All these athletes, you know, y'all athletes, guys. But you know, how do you think? You know, you said it's good that they have the uh, game in the spring, and to me, you know, a lot of people, a lot of fans. You know, we didn't like that. So maybe can you give us a different perspective on that? Well, yeah, I don't want to sound uh I don't want to sound uh too uh I don't want to sound too too selfish. Uh I'm not gonna say it's good. I, I'm I was speaking for myself, like I'll be able to go catch a game in the spring. Of course, I, I want to be back in the fall, you know what I'm saying? But it was like I had old teammates back in the past, it was like, yeah, man, what do I'm like, dang man, I can only come out there and watch a game during uh, our bye week, but then I had, I would have my little cousins or something in Texas, like, hey, can you come out here and watch, you know, first time in, on varsity and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, like, I'm not, it's going to be hard for me to catch all these games and stuff like that. So, you know, I still got a couple of uh, young brothers that's, you know, that's on their last year and stuff like that, that I would like to go see perform, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm, yeah, like I said, I, I was just me being selfish. I don't want to say it. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I get to catch a game, you know, a couple right. of yeah. But that's good that you're giving it from an, you know, from an athlete's perspective because, you know, selfishly as fans, you know, it's like, hey, we want things to stay consistent, stay the same, you know, but never understood how, like, you know, your perspective, like you got friends and brotherhood, you know, in football that you want to go see, but you can't see that. So, man, that's a pretty good perspective, pretty good perspective. So, you know, you're coming from uh, UT, you know, you, you know, you put, did you have the opportunity to play there? Um, no, I, um, my first year there was uh, 2013. I red shirted my uh, freshman year. I was a receiver then. Uh, red shirt, I was a small guy, you know, going in 6'2", 175. Um, so they wanted me to, you know, build some muscle on my body and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I redshirted my freshman year. I had a good, I had a great spring, uh, spring, spring ball game. You know, uh, it was out of myself and another uh, guy who was fighting for that uh, X receiver spot. He was an older guy, and uh, you know, it was it was pretty much looking, it was looking pretty good for me and stuff. And then you know, me just being young and dumb, and you know, just 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 being young and dumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> One, uh, I had went out uh, to Sixth Street, Sixth Street, uh, one time um, in June, uh, and it was like it's crazy because like all day I was telling myself like I'm not gonna go out, um, I wasn't in the mood to go out, and I had told my teammates that I'm, I'm like no, nah, I'm not gonna go out. 
But the only reason why I went out is because I had two uh two basketball homeboys. I had told them that uh I, w- I would take them down to town, you know what I'm saying? And so the whole day I'm thinking like, man, I hope they forget or they find a ride, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm I'm in, I'm laying in my bed, I'm laying in my, my dorm room. Uh at first a couple of my teammates came knocked on the door, like, man, come out with you. I'm like, nah, bro, I ain't going out tonight. I'm I'm cool. Right. And then them two guys came and was like, "Dang, bro, you tell." I'm like, "Yeah, I did." So you know, I, I, I like to be a man of my word. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm like, "All right, bro." Like, I ain't want to just drop them off and then I come home. They couldn't find no ride. I'm, I'm sleeping stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I threw on a little something. Like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna just suck it up. I'm gonna go out. You know what I'm saying? So I go out. We go to the bar. I come across a, uh, a, a friend that had came into town. You know what I'm saying? And she called herself was trying to introduce me to. her. Another one of her friends, and you know what I'm saying I'm like, oh yeah, she, you know, she here uh, for just the weekend. Y'all should link up with the move, and you know what I'm saying. I wasn't too fond of. I'm like, yeah, she a cool girl, but I'm, you know, it's just not, it's not what right. I prefer. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, you know, we all laughed about it. We all had a good time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We young too. Yeah, I ain't even supposed to be in the bar. You know, I'm like, <laughs> twenty. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we all taking shots. We like enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? The girl come back and was like. You know, uh, just if you buy some shots, you know, then yada, yada, yada. I'm like, ah, nah, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? So, right. <laughs> Bless you. After, um, after the bar closed, you know what I'm saying? She finds me. I'm with the two basketball guys and stuff. We all like just there talking with you. You know, she says, hey, I'm coming back home with you. So I'm like, all right, all right, that's cool. You know, this. You know, liquor talking for me. I ain't drunk. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm well aware of my surroundings and stuff like that. Uh, she is also. So um, it was her, her friend. Uh, it was her and two of her friends, uh, my basketball homie, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, and myself. I'm, we're driving back to the dorms. It was like a five-minute drive from where we was at. Uh, we get to the dorms. Everybody depart their ways, you know what I'm saying, and, her friend go with one of my other teammates, which that teammate ended up calling me, asking me for protection. You know, so he called. <laughs> he called. He, uh, he uh, come to the room. He uh, he not. By the time he he's telling me he on the way, he took like fifteen minutes. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, she the 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 uh, the friend I'm with, she's impatient. You know what I'm saying? So. She take control, you know. She take control of the situation. So then I hear a knock at the door. I'm like, "Hold on, let me. I know what he. I know what he want. Let me go get that." She's like, "Nah." So, you know, what I'm saying, as I get up, she cleans herself around me, as, like as if she was like, you know, like a, like I'm carrying the baby. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, I grab, I grab what he need, you know, and I, I crack open the door. You know what I'm saying? Like as I open the door, I'm standing behind the door, like in my head, like this, like here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like here. You know, here, here. <laughs> Get out. Uh, you know, like, all right, what, man, what y'all doing with the woo woo? You know, so he, he, he simply asked, you know, young athletes, we just, he's like, man, what the woo woo? Uh, I, I could tell the whole story, right? Like, hey, hey no whole bar, man. Just look, uh, your yeah, show, talk. He, he's hey, like, you um, it. He, uh, right, right, facts. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, like, dang, what y'all got going? Can I, you know, can I join with the woo woo? You know, she jumped down, she shrugged her shoulders and say, you know, I don't care, you know. So hey, I'm I'm not tripping on, you know, so hey, we, we go in. For everybody. Everybody having a good time, you know. Like we was in we was like in the in the in the dark, you know what I'm saying? So I guess he, he get done and all I see like is a little light light up on his display phone and that like shortly after that, it's a it's a flash go off. So then instantly she jump up. Ah, oh, delete that. Woo, 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 woo. By this time, I didn't, I didn't hit the light switch. Delete that. Woo, woo. So like, uh, he was like, all right, all right. Like, you know, back, back, back. What 2014? Back then, you can with the iPhones, you can delete it off your camera roll, but it is still being all photos or vice versa. <laughs> right. So, um, he ended up, he ended up leaving. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we had these, we had these team issue bas- basketball shorts. Or whatever, which led to him ending up having to come back uh, later on. Excuse me. So uh, he had left, and you know she she wanted to finish. You know, so I go on and finish. Then her friend comes knock at the door. 
you know, so I uh, I go to the door and I'm like, you know, what's up? She's like, Can, uh, I don't want to say her name, but it's the girl. Wait, wait, I'm like, this uh, is in San Antonio? Wait, I need to go down now. Hey, Coley, we need to make a trip to San Antonio, man. Damn, yeah, we, I ain't no 6th yeah. Street jump like that, man. I'm from Burbank. No, I need to go to 6th Street. Uh, no, <laughs> this is oh, okay, okay. She was like, it's, 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 so, it's so and so in here. And I'm like, um, yeah, so again, I'm behind the door. I kind of open the door a little bit more so she can see her. And she laying there laughing and whatever. And she was like, oh, y'all, y'all are nasty. Y'all. Well, I was just checking on you. I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in such and such room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she was like, all right, that's cool. Like, I, I hit you. She was like, are we staying here? Are we going, what's the name? And she, uh, the, the one that, I, that was in my room replied to her and was like, uh, we gonna stay here. We'll leave in the morning. So she was like, "All right." So I shut the door. You know, we finished or whatever, whatnot. But when we finished, the, my teammate he come back in the room because again we had some issues short. So he accidentally put on mine, which led to him not being able to get in his dorm room because his key was in here. So when he came back, uh, whatever, she was just like, um, "I was about to get in the shower." She was like, "Can you just take me and uh, such and such back to West Campus?" I was like, "Yeah." I said, I'm about to jump in the shower. And she's like, all right, I'll meet you downstairs. So, you know, she had ended up leaving the room, you know, through the great run, through the wind. It was something she was saying that something happened on the elevator. And he said, I don't know what happened on the elevator, but I, I know him and I know his character. I know what she was saying. He wasn't capable of it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't see him. But again, I wasn't on there, but, you know. So I get, I get out the shower or whatever. I meet her downstairs. She was on the um, the the campus uh, little telephone or whatever, like trying to whisper. So uh, whenever I was on that, she tried to like you know bag up for me not to see her. And I'm like, I'm like, you know why is she crying? And then she was just like whispering on the phone with the operator. And I'm like thinking in my head, like then I know this is not going. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I, I right. see this, like I, I watched this stuff with my mom on Lifetime. Like I know this is not happening. To me. You know what I'm saying? Like I know. So she looked at me, she was like, man, it has nothing to do with you. I promise, like, you're good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, bro, what is going on? You know? And All so right. you know, I hear a knock at the campus door. It's the police. So I, I go, I go open the door. As they like walking in, rushing in, I'm like back, I'm I'm walking backwards, like in front of them, like, yo, what, yo, what's going on? What's going on? They was like, yeah, or, have you been with her? And I was like, yeah, I, I was just with her. So they immediately uh, take us uh, out there, they immediately like separate us, you know. So I tell them the story, you know, I tell them what happened, whatever, whoop you whoop. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, I, they asked to go see my room. I, I don't have nothing to hide, you know what I'm saying? I tell them, like, man, look, yeah, y'all can come on, come right on up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I showed them the, the condom that was used, the wrapper, the, the towel that she used, the clothes that I had, I put for there after she got out the shower and stuff like that. And man, it like, sounds like some uh, SV, SVU stuff, Law and Order right here, man. Yeah. Like. This is, continue, this is getting good. I need to get my popcorn, but continue on. <laughs> uh, uh, it was, it was, man, it was, it, it seemed like it, the night was, it, it seemed like it was so long. Like, it's like, it was like never ended. I'm like, bro, when is like, I'm, I'm just hoping like, man, I, I know I'm, I'm asleep. Like, I gotta wake up. I, I know I'm asleep. This ain't happening. So, right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, she come out. I mean, uh, they go out there, they see all of that stuff, and they ask who was the other teammate, you know what I'm saying? They figure out who we was. They go get his side of the story. So as we sitting in them, like, they got us all separated. Uh, she then went to the hospital to go get examined uh, or whatever. Um, they tell me, they come back and was like, so she told us that you were consensual, you're going to be all right with the roof and whatever. So I'm like, it's like a sigh of relief. I'm like, whoo, all right. They're like, they're cool. they're like, but the other guy, I'm like, man, I was like, man, he didn't, you know, I was like, oh, well, I was in there, he didn't do nothing wrong, but, you know, take a picture, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's about it. So I don't know what the story she telling y'all came from. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so we go down to the police station. We go down to the uh, police station. Uh, we give we give them out. They ask for the uh, stories. I go in there, I tell them the same story I'm telling y'all. Then uh, my teammate go in there. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a person that was, you know, I was kind of raised, you know, in the hood or whatever. Uh, him not so much so. So he I'm knowing how the police work. He didn't just really know how the police work. They, as soon as I got them, they 
of course, hey, me, M- Montreal told us that he tried to stop you whoop you whoop and yeah, and that you didn't. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess whatever story they got out of him didn't match the story. Like, he was trying to go, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, after he tried first 48, talk about the pot yeah. over here that already done the yeah. <laughs> now nah, he didn't like just say like nah, you know what I'm saying. He was just like trying to clear up what they were saying, and I think they was just taking bits of pieces, bits and pieces of what, um, uh, saying. But the truth, uh, um, he was like, uh, he was like, um, uh, he texted me after the what's the name. He texted me after the what's the name. Like, say, bro, why did you tell him I did this? Woo, woo, woo. They said that you said, and I'm like, bro, that was not the case. I was like, never, bro. I said, this is what they do. You know what I'm saying? I said, just mm-hmm. tell them, just tell them the truth. You know what I'm saying? And what happened, bro? You know what I'm saying? Don't let them boys uh, change their story. Yeah. So that's yeah. where the media got. They was like, oh, these guys was texting each other, trying to listen. At which our lawyers tried to present in court, but they was like, nah, it was like invasion of privacy. So they didn't let you know. They didn't want to look them pretty much. So of course, months go by. Ended up getting kicked off the team after we was uh, after we were indicted. They wanted to try my teammate first because they said he was more, the more winnable case. Uh, during his case, she was caught in 32 inconsistencies, which was like, I guess, 32 lies. Like, it didn't match what wow. she was doing, you know what I'm saying? And also, she said that we had anally had, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That she was anally, she anally had sex, and she... Someone had anally had sex with her, but she for one, it was like no when they did the Western name, it was like no signs of, of, of force. But they did find two other guys semen in her and some other girl's DNA. You know, yeah, they brought they, they brought that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like, uh ancestorguy.com got nothing on them or CSI, who else <laughs> like man. Uh so I'm like, I'm like, I'm I'm in the corner room like, whoa, what bro? You know what I'm saying? So and of course, like with the help of her, like her friends, kind of would like they, they was like, "I'm, we not gonna lie, we gonna tell the truth." So that's how he ended up uh, beating his case, and, and mine's was, uh, which led to mine's being dismissed. You know what I'm saying? Thank God. You know what I'm saying? All right. So um, after that, that's how I got to Grambling. You know what I'm saying? That was like my second chance, my second opportunity. Wow. Well, that's cool, man. Like I'm, I, I'm, you know. I'm sorry that happened, but if that led to you becoming a, a Grambling Tiger, man, you know, like that is cool. Uh, so, you know, one thing at Grambling, like we had was, uh, yeah, you know, at HBCU, you have panty raids. You heard of that? The who? Boxer ra- panty raids and boxer raids. Panty raids and boxer, boxer raids? Boxer raids, yeah. Not I never Grambling, heard of that. Not at Grambling, but I, I think, like, on the like, you go take draws or something. Yeah, I didn't hear that until then. Yeah, that was that ground. They did that. I was, like, I was like, what the hell? It was crazy. But at Louisiana Tech, I seen that they went and TP the house. So I was like, man, people do some crazy things in, uh, you know, crazy things in college. So, you know, but what was your, you know, we got your, um, you know, we got your college moment. You're at Grambling, you're playing, you know. So, you know, what was that NFL recruiting, what was that NFL recruiting experience like coming from an HBCU? Actually, how it happened? Um, they was there. It was it was uh, the Jets. They were, they came to see uh, our running back, Martez Carter. Um, and uh, we had I had a dude break up the middle. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all. Uh, I had a uh, the running back uh, after him had broke uh, broke up a run right up the middle, and um, you know he he had like about. 25, 30 yards on us. And, they, you know, me being – I was in college, I'm, you know, 6'2", 215. I'm a big safety back there. So they, like, uh, I took the wrong angle coming down. I took the wrong gap. And then I, uh, you know, put my foot in the ground, redirected. And they was, like, impressed with the, the catch-up speed. Like, dang, it was, it was quick. And it was, like, bro, they was asking, like um, – they was asking my coach, like, man, who is that? And it was, like, from that day – from that day on, it was like, you know, it was like coaches every week coming in, asking about myself and other guys and stuff like that, just off of that one play. Like, and then they, you know, watched the whole season. Um, they watched the whole season of our, our games. And, you know, I was blessed to be picked up by the Browns in 2018 uh, due to free agency. And, um, that's, that's really how I went, you know what I'm saying? But the, the process, of course, like every weekend, you know, talking to the coaches, 
of course, them bringing up a situation I just told to you guys and stuff, it kind of got a little tiring and stuff like that. But, you know, it was, I feel like after all the hard work that I've done and, you know, what I've been through, it was a gift from God. So, you know, um, I ain't mm-hmm. complaining about it. I just went about it. Yeah, I'm trying to find this place for y'all. I know it's. Oh, it's all good. We got we, we got time. So uh, yes, sir. Casey, he's hanging out. Uh, he just asked us. So you know, what do you think? Um, what do you think is the best NFL linebacker? Who is who the best you, NFL? Who? Yeah, in your opinion, who is the best NFL linebacker? Shout out to you, Scott. Of course, I'm gonna say my my linebacker core is all the best NFL linebacker. But realistically speaking, the best linebacker, like performance wise, is um. The, the the guy from the Seahawks. I can't think of his name. Bobby Wagner. Yeah, yeah. Bobby. You know what's smart dude. No, it's funny because Scott Casey, he's the resident. Uh, yeah, that's he's why, the yeah. resident Seahawks fan. So now I think we were set up to say that on the air. I, I'm on to you, Scott. I'm on to you, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we also got to say anyone but uh, Wagner is wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I done found it for y'all, man. It was taking me a while. I don't know if y'all can see. Man. Damn, you know, DK Metcalf ain't got nothing on you, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the dude was on the sideline. And he was like, man, who, who was that cat? And then, you know what I'm saying? It just, from their point, they just wow. started talking to him. Wow. And you was at safety at that time. Huh? You was at safety at that at that time? Uh, yeah, I was at safety then. Wow. Yeah, that was a nice <laughs> that was a nice play. That was a nice play. Appreciate so, it. you know, we got um so what was your highest moment in sports? You know, NFL, college, you know, even youth uh youth sports. What was your highest uh what was your highest sports moment? My highest sports mm-hmm. moment, man. I would say it had nothing to do with football. I was track. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I, track is my first love. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for the longest, I felt like I was going to the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's how I got I got noticed by UT. Uh, through track. I had went to the state track meet two years in a row for the 200-meter uh, 200 dash. And uh, the track team had noticed me first, and they wanted me to get down to a 20.9 for a full scholarship. And I couldn't break the 21.3. So – you know, they had came and talked to me or whatever, uh, left it at that. But I, then, um, so it was like I would have to walk on or try to, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? If I wanted to do track, I had I had uh, other scholarships for football, but I really wanted to be at UT, OU, or Oregon. And uh, UT had came for football, and I was, and they was like, yeah, you can play football and run track, you know what I'm saying, offer the football scholarship. So I was like, oh, it's a, it's a done deal. I had originally had committed to Wazoo, Washington State University, me and my best friend. And um, it was like, I committed there like two weeks before signing day. UT came, the, the signing day was February 6th on a Wednesday. They came uh, on that the Thursday before the signing day. Uh, and was like, man, come on a visit. And I told them like, nah, I don't, nah I'm already committed. Me and my best friend gonna go. My best friend, he was like, "Bro, I wouldn't be a brother if I told you not to take this visit. I know that's your dream school." He's like, "I'm not gonna wow. tell, I'm gonna be here. I'm not gonna let you not take it. Like, just go take it, bro. Like, if you don't want to do it after that, just let me go." And I took the visit, and I knew I was gonna love it. I called him and told him, you know, I was like, "Yeah, bro, but I'm not gonna come." He, you know, we had a long talk. He just told me, like, "Bro, don't do this because of me." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this your dream. At the end of the day, we both, you know what I'm saying? This guy's plan is destined for us to go wherever we we supposed to go. So we talking. I was like, all right, bro, I'm going to go. You sure? He's like, man, yeah. so I'll be committed and committed at uh, UT. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I tell myself, man, I wish I would have just went with my first mom. But then it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's life. You know, we live and we learn, you know, through our mistakes. So it was it was a great journey. It, you know, I can't, like I said, I can't complain, man. You know, I'm here today. I consider myself blessed. Thanks, Lord. So, you know, what would you give any tips? You know, we're getting ready to, uh, you know, to wrap them things up. But, you know, what uh, What would you give some tips that, you know, coming from an HBCU, you know, you've had, you know, uh, an ability to go to a predominantly white school and an HBCU, and you've gained success from an HBCU. So, you know, what do you, what would you give to some youth ke- uh, football players, to some youth athletes, some up-and-coming athletes? Um. 
at the end of the day, competition is within itself. I always tell people that you are your greatest competition and your only competition. Only you can defeat yourself. Say that. You know I mean? So it was like, you know, uh, I'm talking about like, when you wake, you, you face a competition every morning, you know what I'm saying? When you wake up, you know, everybody got an alarm set. Are you going to wake up on that first alarm or are you uh, you going you gonna to press snooze? You know, if you press snooze, you done lost the competition within yourself. You know, I'm going I'm to get these extra five minutes today. Like, that's the first step you done lost today. So it was like, I always, how I consider it now, you know what I'm saying? I, the opportunity is now here. I always want to consider myself to defeat the worse of me. You know what I'm saying? I always want the better me to always show it, you know what I'm saying? So like I don't I don't worry about the next guy like oh he got these stats or this person doing this or oh, he he richer you know what I'm saying hey kudos to you I I I never want to see a man any man woman person you know downfall I, I want I want to see everybody uplift themselves but I'm I'm worried about you know within myself you know what I'm saying if I if I if I'm worried about what that person doing and trying to chase after them my life not, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't live the life like how they want to live, you know what I'm saying? I, I need to live the life with what bits fits me and comes to me. So at the end of the day, I'm, co- I'm competing with myself, you know what I'm saying? So Man, that's a, that's a big nut because a lot of people think that, you know, hey, you know, I'm trying to compete with the next person, you know what I'm saying? Like if, you know, because my, my thing was track as well. You know, the thing is, is, you know, it's like with track, people don't understand. The only thing I'm competing with is my lane. I need to stay within my lane. I'm not looking over here. So, you know, just like other boxers, they think they're competing with other boxers. No, you're really competing with yourself. You know, so, you know, so that's some great nuggets right there. I, had, that's, I like that. I like that. Coach Lee, you got any questions? I sure do. So, <laughs> so, you're, so you're currently up in Cleveland. You know, I'm a big dude. I like to eat. It is what it is. So, got a couple of questions regarding food for you. So, in Cleveland, have you had the chance to check out Angie's Soul Food Cafe? Come on, man. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Come on, man. You coming from the south? I gotta get the best soul food. That is the <laughs> so, so it's definitely up to par. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's worth the hype, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to limit myself. Uh, you know, you know, I want to say, like that, man. Hey, when I when I do go, I get two plates. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna get one for now. If I'm a cheat, I'm a cheat right. I'm gonna get them. Hey, I heard that, man. <laughs> and being that you are from Amarillo, um, have you done the big text check? I mean, challenge. Nah, I never, I never, I've been out there one time my whole life, and uh, I can honestly tell you, I know for a fact I'm gonna end up paying for that state. <laughs> it's not it's people like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna starve myself, and I'm gonna just, hey, man, that. Hey, that ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> nothing to to play with. <laughs> it's only 72 ounces, man. You like you can knock it down. <laughs> no, I, I don't even know if I can do a half of that, man. You know? That, that I mother. got you. I got you. <laughs> Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation, man. PS PlayStation. Yes, sir. Okay. We got to get you on the gamer team, man. Hey. Matt, hey. Matt underscore me under. Anybody want to get it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, call my dude K Rob, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. And my man. last question for you. It's kind of it's kind of obvious, but I'm just curious. Madden or 2K? <sighs> man, I, I I rather play 2K. I'm better at 2K. I'm better at 2K. I like Madden, but I'm just not as good as I am at, at 2K. Than I yeah, am. yeah. So, but hey, who you run oh. with on there? Huh? Who you run with on there? The Rockets. Rockets in the okay. Thunder. That's my team. Okay. Man. Okay. All right, that's what's so, up. Uh, yeah, we definitely gotta get him on that game. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, hold on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you what was crazy because you know I'm a uh, XFL. Before we get up out there, definitely got to bring up shout out to uh, you know to the Rock for bringing back the XFL. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Dallas uh, Renegade season ticket holder. I seen your name come across the roster. What's up with that? Like, you had the opportunity to you know you had. And the NFL experience, like, man, what is going on? You have all these unique experiences. What was that like? Um, I never, I never, I never made it to to see the team. You know, uh, 
I found out I didn't know I didn't know the draft was happening. I didn't know I didn't even know that I had was my name was like I didn't know I was gonna be in the XFL or none of that. You know, I was wow. just working out one day. I was with the uh Browns in 2019. Um you know, they had uh, waved me at the end of the last preseason game and was like, we, we want to bring you back. You know, that was, what, early September 1st? Mm -hmm. uh, I went a whole month with uh, no team, so I was back home, what we call on the streets. Um, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm in the gym, you know. Uh, I get a phone call from my agent. You know, he kind of going, hey, man, what are you doing? Why are you not answering your phone? Like, you know, <laughs> these guys trying to draft you, and they talking about you're not answering the phone. I'm like, Draft, you know, I'm thinking like, draft ain't until, oh. you know, so I'm like, bro, what, what you mean? Right. He's like, he's like, the XFL, these guys, they drafted you and you're not answering the phone. I'm like, bro, I ain't know nothing about that. And so he's like, yeah, call me. So I call or whatever and whatnot. And, uh, you know, he was like, hey, Meander, what, what you doing? He was trying to, you know, he wanted to let you know. Uh, uh, we want to let you know. We wanted to let you know that we, we drafted you, and so we glad to be. Are you glad to be? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. What, what, what? So my trainer, like, man, what, what what's going on? What? So, I'm, <laughs> so you know, everybody in the gym, like, oh yeah, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. So you know, I, I get off the phone with them, and then uh, uh, like 30 minutes later, uh, the Browns call me back, like, hey, what you doing? You have been working out? Woo, woo. So look, we want to bring you back in on Monday. I'm like, what? Like you got drafted. <laughs> I'm I'm happy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I had to leave out that day uh, because I was finding out the gender of uh, my daughter uh, that that weekend, and there was uh, her mom was in L.A. We was having it in L.A., and I was in Houston at the time. Uh, so I was like, man, I was like, man, it's a great move. Like I'm, a, you know, hopefully I'm a, at the time. I did not at the time, but. During that time, I did want a daughter, so I'm like, man, everything just falling into place, you know what I'm saying? I'm right. just time and I'm just patiently waiting, you know. Hopefully, I find out this weekend if I get a daughter, then I'm going to be in Cleveland, back in Cleveland Monday with the Wooten, you know. And both my wishes had came uh, came true, you know. Um, wow. Yeah, my daughter, she finally, uh, she's turning one on Tuesday, so. Congrats. You know, Right, Happy so birthday, I, yeah. little man! Yeah, yeah, you know I seen he was on the ground buying us some Jordans, right? So uh, she already jaywalking, you know what I'm saying? We got all her gifts like ready to be put up. Blessing, What's up? most Blessing. definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you know, before we get up out of here, I gotta ask you about the dog pound. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you know, you play for the Browns. There's so much rich, rich history there, and you know, you come from. Amarillo, you know, it's hot. So I got to ask you about the cold weather. Is it cold out there and the dog pile? Oh, uh, man, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we here from Amarillo, I'm like, okay, I, I can, I like, I like the cold. You know what I'm saying? I can do the cold. I, I rather the cold than the hot. Man, Amarillo, we probably get about, maybe I want to say about 28 degrees at the mm -hmm. lowest. You know what I'm saying? Right. And one time, I, I I thought I was ready for this cold weather. I walked outside my house, man. Man, I, you know, I had on some sweats, <laughs> a, a hoodie, and a jacket. Man, <laughs> I'm outside. It felt like nice, just damn, like it was so cold. My oh. whole body was thing, and I said, "Oh no!" <laughs> my time off in this bundle enough. I was walking like a little puff man or something. <laughs> <laughs> park is. I'm just walking. I'm just oh man. man. Man, that's just that disrespectful cold right there. Man. <laughs> so, so what is it they so you know one thing I seen like they got a um, a celebration called the dog pound where everyone just jumps on top of each other. Uh I mean, you know, this is just I, mean, I guess it's just what they've been doing for years, you know what I'm saying? We just adding to it, happy to be a part of it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a great experience, you know. Like I experienced my first win this this season. Uh, I, I want to say well, that was the Cincinnati game. I want to say it was BJ Goodson caught an interception or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just traditional, you know. Wow. Just a good time. So how did you learn that? So I mean, like, so you know, did someone come up to you like, "Hey, man, we got the dog pound. When we do, when we celebrate, just come jump on top of everyone." Like, Not how just, did you just? Nobody told me. You just somebody make a play, and hey, 
It just, I guess the old <laughs> guys knew of it, and then you come in, you just learn as you there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nice, nice. Well, man, we definitely, uh, you know, appreciate you for, you know what I'm saying, hanging out with a shout out to you and, you know what I'm saying, everyone. But, uh, you know, any shout out for, you know, any shout outs and how can people find you? Before we let uh, you, go. you can find me, you can find me uh, on all my social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, uh, Twitter. It's all the same. Mac Meander, all one word, M-A-C-M-E-A-N-D-E-R. Uh, that's where you can find me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and like I said, my PS, my my PS name, Mac. Put it out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call you on that. Like the like other <laughs> folks said, I'm gonna call you. My, yeah. my best games for anybody that feel like they're good. Mortal Kombat, uh, UFC, 2K. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That was intense. laughs> you feel like that? I don't mind giving you a spanking and humbling. <laughs> you know what I'm but hey, man, this uh, this your dude, Uncle Leroy. Before we get up out of here, you know you can't say the Leroy without the junior coming back for season two. Got a lot of good things going on. But Coach Lee, anything before we get out of here? Hey, appreciate you joining us tonight. Had a lot of fun. Um, but try to end your soul food if I ever get up that way. Got you, man. Let me know, man. We are gonna go together. I'm, hey. Yeah. Already, <laughs> we already know you got two plates up there. You got two plates. We we know what your order is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at all that. This dude, I'm gonna leave guard. Don't say the leave road out the junior damn block with my dude, Mac Neander. Wow.